But what a lot of people fail now to comprehend is that FICO and Vantage, they're only algorithms. Mm. They have nothing to do with your credit. They are a risk model mm. that takes the information from your consumer report. Most of the stuff that you wrote, nine times out of 10 is what most people knew mm. about credit. Yeah. So if you can just touch on some of the things that you wrote in that book, yeah. and then now I'm gonna follow up now with the consumer, yeah. with the consumer law portion of it, and show now how there's this big separation between a FICO score or a Vantage score yeah. versus what's really on the consumer report. Yes. A lot of people go to Credit Karma, right? And they see a score on Credit Karma and they're like, yo, that is my score, that is my score. Well, not really. It is a risk score, yeah. but it's not what 90% of banks use. 90% right. of banks use your FICO. You're the FICO 2, FICO 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 10T, based on the different model that that institution has. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, let's go back to the video. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. So listen, Americans' total credit card balance is $925 billion in the third quarter of 2022, according to the latest consumer debt data from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. That's a $38 billion jump from $887 billion in the first quarter of 2022. Today, we have someone who will show you how to use consumer laws to delete any account from your consumer report. This is your chance to reclaim the control that is rightfully yours. Whether you're a consumer who needs to repair your credit or a business owner who wants to learn about consumer laws, welcome Doreen Delvante in the <laughs> building. What's up, brother? How you man, doing, man? With, a, with an intro oh, like man. that, you would have thought I got nominated for the Grammy or Yo, something. I mean, you <laughs> might as well, right? Because the Grammys is just um, promoting or celebrating people who... Uh, have great music, and I mean, I know that you know the right sounds and the right things that you say to yourself mm -hmm. can help you build wealth. But what you're doing, you know, as somebody who understands that credit is an important part of building wealth, credit, you know, loans, and mm -hmm. you know, those things could literally change your generation for years and years to come, and with what you're doing in the revolution like revolutionizing um credit for how we know it mm -hmm. um i think it's important uh that we give you that type of intro because listen y'all y'all need to pay attention right because a lot of us you know like there's a lot of consumer debt there's a mm -hmm. lot of errors on credit reports mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who have bad credit there's a lot of people who are who are um you know stopped from living their you know, financial dreams because of that. And so as somebody that's that's on the forefront of helping people, uh, I think it's important that they know mm -hmm. like this is this is gonna be a good show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um so let's start, you know, before we we, we dive into um, you know, all of the, the great content and the information 
um, that you're going to, you know, enlighten us with. Um, for those who don't know, mm -hmm. who is Doreen Delavante? So what's going on, guys? My name is Doreen Delavante. I'm your favorite consumer law expert. I help people repair, rebuild, restore their own credit using consumer laws. I also help credit repair business owners to scale their credit repair business to an extra hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And I just launched a program for affluent and busy entrepreneurs like yourself, mm -hmm. where now I personally will be repairing, rebuilding, and fixing y'all's credit because I've gotten the request so much. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you might as well just do it, bro. Wow! Wow! So wow. yeah. So so let let let's let's dive into credit, right? Because like for me, you know, I, I wrote a book about um man, about a decade ago now, right? Yeah, 2013, decade ago. Wow. Man, time is fun. Wow. Uh, I wrote a book a decade ago called What the FICO, uh 12 Steps to Repairing Your Credit. Mm -hmm. Um and I can imagine that um things have changed since 10 years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, but it's still a good book, so y'all should check it out. Uh, but but you but you 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 talk about FICO um, in a way that I'd never heard of it before. Um, can you can you discuss like FICO and a role that it plays in your consumer report? All right, so that's a very good question. Before we get to there, um, your book. Uh, the reason why I want you to bring this up a little bit more, mm -hmm. for the simple fact that most of the stuff that you wrote, nine times out of ten is what most people knew mm -hmm. about credit. Yeah. So if you can just touch on some of the things that you wrote in that book, yeah. and then now I'm going to follow up now with the consumer, yeah. with the consumer law portion of it, and show now how there's this big separation between a FICO score or a Vantage score yeah. versus what's really on the consumer. Part. Yeah. So. You know, what the FICO, 12 steps to repair your credit, you know, really talked about um, the different um, uh, parts of your credit, right? Mm -hmm. And so I call it the 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, mm -hmm. 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, 35, 30, 15, 10, 10. Um, you know, that breaks down to 100% of your mm -hmm. score. 35% uh, of your score uh, is your payment history, Correct. which means, uh, you know, are you paying your bills on time? Mm -hmm. Uh, thirty percent of your score is mm -hmm. your uh, usage Utilize. ratio, mm -hmm. so your utilization ratio. Um, and so, if you have any revolving uh, credit, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, are you are you keeping those balances thirty percent or lower? Mm -hmm. um, then you got fifteen percent of your score, which is the length of credit mm -hmm. history, uh, which is how long mm -hmm. uh, have you had credit. Uh, then you have the 10%, which is any new credit that mm -hmm. you have. And in order to, um, you know, uh, keep that on par, you just don't unnecessarily uh, mm -hmm. apply for, for, for loans and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, uh, you have your credit mix, which is the different types of credit uh, that you have. I am utterly impressed. Like, you see me over here smiling, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, if you're not really in the credit, uh, even people in the credit game, when I say 35, 30. We're about to trip up, though. I, I got you. That's why no, I'm here. I'm going to trip up on no, my no, own no, show, no, fam. No, 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 no. I got you. I got no, you. No, no. But the fact that you're able to say it like that, it means yeah. that you literally, you're, you're from a place of authenticity. 100%. Right? Yeah. So, it, 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 like, there's people right now that's in the credit game where if I say 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, they have no idea what it means. Yeah. And they're like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm yeah. like, okay. 35, 30, <laughs> right. 15, 10, 10. Yeah, yeah. And it, it takes a while for it to click. Yeah. So for you just to give that off the top of the dome yeah. on a book you wrote over a decade ago, bro, yeah. you are the real deal. Yeah. So that, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. Like you are the real deal. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So it goes even further. It goes one step further, yeah. right? So when we look at 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, well, it translates to points as well. Mm. So FICO, right, ranges from 300 to 850. Yeah. That gives us 550 points mm -hmm. to play with, right? So for the 35%, which is the payment history, that equates to 192.5 points. Mm. When we go to the 30%, that's 165 points. When we go to the 15, it is 82.5. And then when you go to the 10 and the 10, those are now... Um, 55 points each, mm. which total 550 points, mm. right? So when you know now how the system itself works and what categories gives you points, 
it's easy to manipulate how you want those numbers to go. Mm. This is how, when I learned this, this is how I built the 800 credit score mm. three times in one year. Wow. And you're going to hear a lot of people say, oh, that's not possible. You need mortgages. I got the receipts. Mm. Go to my Instagram, yeah, yeah. the credit hero. Look in there. You'll see the testimonials. Yeah. And you'll see mine. Yeah. Right? But what a lot of people fail now to comprehend is that FICO and Vantage, they're only algorithms. Mm. They have nothing to do with your credit. Mm. They are a risk model mm. that takes the information from your consumer report. Mm. That information from your consumer report put into that algorithm spits out data. That data now becomes a risk score. Mm. So a lot of people might be saying right now, Doreen, what do you mean Vantage? What is a Vantage? Yeah. What is a FICO? I've never heard of those before. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people... <laughs> Uh, a lot of people go to Credit Karma, right? And they see a score on Credit Karma, and they're like, yo, that is my score, that is my score. Well, not really. It is a risk score, yeah. but it's not what 90% of banks use. 90% right. of banks use your FICO. You're the your FICO 2, FICO 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 10T, mm -hmm. based on the different model that that institution has, mm -hmm. that models now for different things right so I'm, I'm not going to go too deep into like the score buckets and all these crazy stuff what people really need to know is that the information is what generates the score mm. right so when we go to the definition of what a consumer report is which we will in a second um we're going to see that i'm going to prove to you around four things right and if i can't prove four things to you by the end of the episode, I will sell you a thousand dollars, and I'll make sure everybody see right, me sell you a thousand dollars. And so, and so, I'm going to challenge you on those four things. Absolutely, too, and no? I'll prove all of them. Gotcha. So, the first thing I'm going to prove to you is that a FICO score or a Vantage score does not exist on your consumer report. Okay. It, they're independent, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing I'm going to I'm going to prove is that late payments are illegal, and mm. utilizations are illegal. And mm. then that's And when four. you say illegal, you mean like... It's not supposed to be They're not supposed report. to be on your, on your all, report. No. Do tell. Okay. All right. And then let me see if I, there's a bonus thing I want to give to y'all. Uh, I think of the bonus. On okay. But these are, those are the four main points that I'm going to prove. Okay. So the first thing, and you know, I don't want people to say, Doreen, you memorize the stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, would you pull something up for me? Yeah. 15 yep. USC. All right. So we're going to go... Uh, 15 USC. Correct. 1681A. So we're going to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And this is the law. For those of you who don't know what the FCRA is, the FCRA is the law that governs everything that gets reported to your credit. So 15 USC, 1681A. It should bring you to definition rules of construct. Yes, sir. All right, scroll down to number two to the exclusion. All right, so... So number two, mm -hmm. um, should say exclusions. It's not. Wait, hold on for a second. So we got. Uh, it's like ABC Consumer Report. So in general, sixteen eighty one. Oh, exclusion. I got you yeah. right here. All right. So exclusions, um, except as provided in paragraph three, the term consumer report does not include. Does not. Does include. not include. So if yeah. Congress says Ash. What you're about to read, this mm -hmm. report that I'm talking about, this is not included. What yeah. does that simply mean? It shouldn't be on it. Sh it shouldn't be on yeah. there, right? Like, can we all agree that it's not supposed to be there? Yeah. All right, please continue. All right, so it says, um, uh, A, subject to section 1681S3 uh, of title, any report containing information solely as to transactions or experiences between the consumer and the person uh, making the report. All right, good. So now, there was an imp there's three definitions we're going to look at, right? Yeah. The first one is the consumer report. Yeah. What is the correct definition of a consumer report? Mm -hmm. So if you click on the word consumer report, Congress is going to give you the definition. Uh, so it's a hyperlink. Yeah. Um, so consumer report says, uh, in general... Uh, the term consumer report means any written, oral, or other communication of any information by a consumer reporting agency bearing a uh, customer's creditworthiness 
uh, credit standing, credit capacity, character, general reputation, personal characteristic, or mode of living, which is used or expected to be used um, or collected in whole or in part for the purpose of serving as a factor in establishing the consumer's eligibility for a credit or insurance to be used primarily for personal, family, or household purposes, B, employment purposes, or C, any other purposes authorized under Section 1681B of this title. Now, in what you just read, yeah. did Congress mention a FICO score or Vantage score? No, not once. So that is the definition by law of what the Consumer Report is. Yeah. So now, is it fair to say, based on the definition provided by Congress, that the Consumer Report is independent of a risk score model or a credit score, which is a FICO score or a Vantage score? I would say yes, right? Uh, because it, cause if the Consumer Report is saying that uh, this report is any written, oral, or other communication, information, by a uh, uh, um, credit consumer reporting agency, right, to try to see their credit worthiness, credit standing, credit capacity, character, general reputation, personal characteristic, or mode of living, mm -hmm. right, and it's used to collect uh, the part. So it's saying that's what the consumer report mm -hmm. is. It's written, oral, other communication. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't mention anything about your FICO score, or your Vantage score, which is a, which is data collection. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, see, the reason why th there's 343 million people in America, mm. the last time I checked. Yeah. And for every nine, every eight to nine people out of ten have incorrect or inaccurate information on mm. their credit. Yeah. So you're taking about 70 to 90 percent of that 340 million, mm. right? That's the amount of people right now that's suffering with bad credit yeah. or inaccurate items on their credit because they cannot make a distinction that your consumer report and your FICO score or your Vantage score are completely separate entities. Mm. So when we go back to the exclusion sections, right? Mm -hmm. Earlier you mentioned from your book, you mentioned 35, 30, 15, 10, 10. Yeah. And we know that the biggest part of the FICO score is the 35%, which is the payment history, yeah. and the 30%, which is the utilization, which makes up um, 65%, and that 65% translates to 357.5 points, mm. yeah. right? So a lot of people that don't know consumer law, they're losing about 357.5 points mm. on their credit because they don't know the things that they don't know and the people that do know the things that they don't know use the things that they don't know against them. Mm. Right? Yeah. So when we go back to the exclusion section, yeah. though, right? It says, except as provided in paragraph 3, the term consumer report does not include. Right. And then when you go down to A1, it says what? Reports? Uh, reports containing information solely as to transactions or experiences between the consumer and the person making the report. Okay, so let's find out who the consumer is. Can yeah. we click on the word consumer? So consumer is the term, uh, it means an individual. Correct. You and me, we're yep. the consumers. Now, if I was to ask you what does the word person mean without clicking on it yet, what would you say the word person means? Uh, I would say a person is also uh, an individual. All right. Yeah. What if I told you a person is also a corporation? Mm. Let's go to the definition. Let's see what it All says. All right. So in the person making, person, the term person means any individual thing. Oh, but partnership, corporation, trust, estate, cooperative association, government or governmental uh, uh, subdivision or agency or other entity. All right. Your Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Department of Education, uh, Sally Mayer, whoever, who all these entities, these mm -hmm. are all persons. Yeah. But you see, because we have a definition and we think that person only means you and me, mm -hmm. a natural person of flesh and blood, they're overlooking the fact that a corporation, a Wells Fargo, Bank of America, um, TD Bank, whoever, these are actual persons too. Mm. So it says 
transactions. Yeah. It says the term consumer report does not include. And then A1 says transactions mm -hmm. or experiences mm -hmm. between the consumer and the person making the report. Yeah. Well, your, what is your payment history? Mm. Isn't but, but let me ask you a question, though, right? Because, you know, when I, when I hear this, it almost feels like it's saying that it should not include um, information or transactions, experience between the consumer and the person making the report. Mm -hmm. So is it Bank of America or Chase or the, the bank making a report? Or is it the uh, credit reporting agencies like TransUnion, Equifax, mm -hmm. and Experience who are making the report? Well, see, a lot of Tell people, me that, Durant. A lot of people don't know. See, TransUnion, mm -hmm. Equifax, and Experian... They don't make a credit report. Mm. They report what is given to them mm. by furnishers of information. Mm. Your Bank of America, yeah. your Wells Fargo, your Capital One. Mm. So the person making the report is your Capital One, mm. your Bank of America, your Wells Fargo. Mm. They got your information. They're making a report on you or they're furnishing a report on you mm. to these non-affiliated third parties. Mm. Right? So if your transaction between... Durain De Levante and Wells Fargo is not a part of the consumer report. Mm. Well, Wells Fargo can't report me late. Mm. See, Wells Fargo only reports me late if I let them report me late. Mm. See, when I tell people that a late payment don't exist, it doesn't exist to it only exists to people who let it exist. Mm. So in December, I did a challenge, right? And on that challenge, we got about 450 accounts deleted. And we're doing one again in February. The point is this. A lot of things that a lot of people think that are factors of their credit or their consumer report are not true mm. because they've been consumed by misleading information. Mm. See, it's all in the writing. Mm -hmm. Break the writing apart. See what they're saying. Once you see what they're saying, mm -hmm. you know how to operate. So one of the big things is the transaction or the experience. Mm -hmm. Well, your transaction is your payment history. Mm -hmm. Your payment history is 35% of FICO, which is 192.5 points. Mm -hmm. Right? The next part is the experience. The experience now is how you're using that line of credit mm -hmm. or what you called earlier your utilization. Mm -hmm. I got a $10,000 line. I'm using in 3%. That's my experience with that line of credit. Mm -hmm. That's 30%, which is another 165 points. Combined, that's 357.5 points mm. that you can claim just by knowing consumer law. Wow. 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 And, and, so, and so the fact that they can't report it, but they are reporting it, well, how... Like, how do you get it off? Because if you go to, you know, if I, if I go somewhere and Bank of America, Capital One, Chase, whatever bank says, no, you're, you're late, and then I pull my credit report and it's saying I'm late, and, and I can pull up, you know, this, this exclusion all mm -hmm. I want, and when I'm going to, I'll be mean, look, I was late, but they're not supposed to report it. How do you get it off the report then? Uh I can't speak for anybody else, but yeah. I can tell you, late payments are one of the easiest things for us to do. We've mm. gotten on the last challenge, it was about 100 late payments. One guy, wow. Wes, he lives here in Atlanta. Mm. Wes got 128 negative items deleted from his credit. Wow. Right? So what All I'm, through doing consumer, consumer law. Consumer law. Hmm. See, when you use consumer law, this is the law congress put in place mm. this isn't something Durain made up yeah this isn't something ash made up yeah. this is something that is in law it's called the fair credit reporting act yeah. anybody can look it up yeah. right and when you go there the law is very clear Ex um exclusions the term consumer report does not include they tell you it does not include it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you let a corporation like wells fargo bank of america and these companies report you as late that's because you want them reporting you as late mm -hmm. see when you know better you do better so learning consumer laws you are able to use the laws leverage the laws to get these accounts deleted mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what type of account you think you have mm. i can show you the consumer law that can get it deleted mm. the next thing i want to bring to your attention do you believe that banks firms or any other institution can report whatever they want on a person's consumer report no like they have they have to it has to be 
accurate. It can't be erroneous. It has to be, mm -hmm. you know, like we think about, like you mentioned, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be reported in, in, in a fair way, in an honest way. If, mm -hmm. uh, if there's any mistakes, you know, it has to be removed. So what if I told you that in order for any of these firms to report anything, they must get permission from the consumer. Mm. And in this permission, three disclosures must be provided from the be provided to the consumer mm -hmm. that a consumer must get before any of these information can get reported. Mm. Have but, you ever heard? But but don't but don't but don't you give them permission when you take out the loan or whatever, like sign that paperwork? You give them one. It's three. Mm. A co every contract that I've looked including mine yeah. there's only one disclosure that mm. was given the law says you're supposed to get three and even when you get these three the consumer still have the right to opt out mm. if the consumer does not want their information reported wow okay so, and so and so, so, so and, to prove it wait wait so <laughs> so, so wait let me just get this right so if something is late and the bank or whoever you took the money from reports it, um, they're reporting it Ill illegally, you're saying? Correct. Okay. Well, we just read it. Yeah. I didn't make it up. It's, yeah. in, their, it's in their laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We're just a good steward of information, reading and learning the information and bringing it to the public. Yeah. Now, is there an account on your credit right now that you don't want on there? Yes. You have the ability... To get that account off. Yeah, I go say the bank name, but um, <laughs> no, nah, but tell you it's so crazy, right? Like, there's a credit card mm -hmm. that I really don't use, and every time, like, they don't do a good job telling me, like, 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 like the one time, I think, I think the one time, um, it was like a, a a fee, like an annual fee or something, like it was a fee that I, I don't use this card. Then all of a sudden, I get a, a I don't get no calls, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Then I get a, 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 a alert that my credit score changed, and I look, and it's it's like, you know what I'm trying to say? It's like it's, it's like it's like fifty dollars, and then like yo, it's a late payment for like fifty dollars, and so they hit me with with one ding. It was like two years ago. Then they then. Then they hit me with, I'm like, yo, I got, I got two late reports. Me, as cash, I got two late, late payments on my credit report on this one bum card that I don't even use. And the only reason I'm not closing it, the only reason I didn't close it is because I had it for a long time. The age you want to preserve. Right, I need my 15%. <laughs> And how many points is that? You said 15% is... So 15% is 82.5 I points. I need my 82.5 points. That's the only reason oh, I didn't close it. Yeah, I need that off, B. Uh, that was... <laughs> I need that to come off. <laughs> like, do you think you're the only one that's suffering from this? Oh, no, I, I guarantee there's other and people. And you're financial... Like, I'd like to think you're financially savvy no, and I, very financially I mean, responsible. Yeah. But you see, because you don't know the things that you don't know, the yeah. people that do know the things you don't know use the things that you don't know against you because you just don't know it. Yeah. Right? So... 15, so how do I get it off, though? So first of all, the late payment level. Yeah. Right? Um, the late payment letter. I have the late payment letter. Yep. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to get that situated, and we're going to send that off, right? Yo, listen. Yo, insiders, we're going to do a new a new series called Behind the Vault. So even <laughs> after this episode, he go, look, we're we going to talk. If he capping, if he don't take my two off, I'm going to let y'all know. But come on. So I'll get that done on the challenge. Dope. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Dope. Now, the next thing is this. Remember the three disclosures that I told you about? Yeah. All right. I want to show it to you for yourself. Yeah. Um, the first thing before we even get there, did you know that banks and institutions are supposed to protect your information and not give your information to nobody? I want to say, I mean, I was a banker, which, yeah, absolutely. All right. So 15 U.S.C. 6801. So 15 uh, U.S.C. Uh, you said 6801. All right. There we go. Protection of non public personal information. Mm hmm. Hmm. And so, private, privacy obligation uh, it is the policy of the Congress that each financial institution has an affirmative and 
continuing obligation to respect the privacy of its customers and to protect the security mm -hmm. and confidentiality of those customers' non-public personal information. Confidentiality. Yeah. What does confidentiality mean? Uh, that means like private. That means private. Yeah. So the information that you that you give to your institutions, your banks, this is private information. Yeah. See, banks, when you call, they'll say, "Oh, we have a right to report it." To no, you don't. Yeah. I've heard this many times. Oh, we can report your information. The law gives us permission to report your information to the credit bureaus. First of all, credit bureaus don't exist. That's mm. number one. Yeah. There's no such thing as a credit bureau. Mm. And then number two, no, you don't. That law says you have a ongoing obligation to protect my personal information. Mm. It is confidential, and you cannot give access to anyone my information if I didn't give you permission to do mm. it. But you see, we've been given the script backwards, mm. saying that, oh, we can report anything we want. That is a lie. Mm. It is a bold-faced lie. And like, like people, you have to wake up. You have to read. Mm. Like It is important that we learn this stuff because right now, the same way you got hit with those too late payments, yeah. those too late payments shouldn't even be there from the jump because fact. what? Under the exclusion section, yeah. your transactions and your experiences between the consumer you and the person, whoever bank that is, making the report is excluded from your consumer report. Mm. But not until you, you exercise these consumer rights, mm. then I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's, mm. move, let's move away from this one. We got a live one here, guys. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. He, he, he know the law. He know the law. But yeah. when you don't, they just take you for take anybody else. Wow. Right? So now let's move over to the next section, right? Mm. 15 U.S.C. 6802. And this, oh, my God. This section is how you get anything deleted. All right, let's see. Hey, yo, Durant K with the, with the smoke. Uh, 6802, and then we got the obligations with respect to disclosures of personal information, mm -hmm. right? And so notice requirements, except as otherwise provided in this subchapter, a financial institution may not directly or through any affiliate mm -hmm. disclose non-affiliated third party um, to a non-affiliated third party any non-public information unless unless look there we go unless unless such financial institutions provides or has provided to the consumer which is probably you and I mm -hmm. a notice that complies with section 6803 of this title. Mm -hmm. So now let's go down to the opt out B. Opt out. In general, a financial institution may not disclose non public personal information to a non affiliated third party unless such financial institution clearly and conspicuously discloses to consumer in writing or in electronic form or other form permitted by regulations mm -hmm. prescribed under Section 6804 of this title that such information may be disclosed to such third party. Mm -hmm. That's That part right there is 90% of people only get that part. Mm, yep. But there's three parts to it. Yeah. There's A, there's B, and, and there's C. C. All right, and then B says the, uh, the consumer is given the opportunity before the time that such information is initially disclosed to direct that such information not be disclosed to such third party. And then C. And then C, the consumer is given an explanation of how the consumer can exercise that non-disclosure option. All right, so let me break that down. A says, before you report my information, you have to tell me. Mm. Right? B says... Okay, before you report the information, you have to tell me and I'm going to give you a yes or a no. And then C says, if I say no, you now have to tell me what I need to do to ensure that you don't report this information. Mm. Mm. Read it again now. All right, so a financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party unless such financial institution clearly and conspicuously discloses to the consumer in writing or 
in electronic form or other form permitted by regulations prescribed under Section 6804 of this title mm -hmm. that such information may be disclosed to such a third party. B, the consumer is given the opportunity, mm -hmm. right? So given the opportunity before the time that such information is initially disclosed to direct that such information not be disclosed mm -hmm. to such third party and, right, the consumer is given an explanation of how the consumer can exercise that non-disclosure mm -hmm. option and is what I'm focused on. And. Because it didn't say because one or the other. It's, it's, it's and. saying all three of all them. Three. Wow. Okay. So do you ever, and remember, it says it must be what? Conspicuous. Conspicuous, yeah. Have you, or can yeah. you ever recall ever getting those three disclosures? No, nah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, I know. I've applied for credit cards. I just sign them, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't. I don't. But know. what does conspicuous mean? That means it got to be obvious. So that whether you gotta, you whether gotta you're it. rushing through it or not, yeah. it must be readily available for mm. you to see it yeah. and in plain sight. Mm. So now, if an institution student loans, oh yeah. my God, I'm giving you all this. Yeah, man. So you know, people say you can't delete student loans from your credit. That yeah. is a lie. Wow. We've gotten over. 150 student loans deleted. Wow. Right? So let me make something clear, guys. Deleting a student loan from your credit does not mean you don't have the obligation or the alleged obligation. Mm. Right? Taking stuff off your credit is you control what gets reported. Mm. So let me make this very clear. You control what gets reported. Yeah. What gets reported goes into a FICO algorithm. Mm. There goes your 700, there goes your 750, mm. and that's how I built an 800 three mm. times. It's information. Mm. Wow. And, and, and so for my insiders out here who's hearing all this, inf this information, um, all it takes is knowing the information mm -hmm. and then being able to have the right letters mm -hmm. that you're sending to the bureaus so that they could comply with, with this information. See? All right. So the first thing I want to just correct, and bureau, mm -hmm. let's, let's dissect this word a little bit. 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of everybody in America calls TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian bureaus, yeah. right? Now, if I was to ask you, where did you learn this word from? What, what, would, you, what would your answer be? Um... Pro probably from something I read from a, from uh yeah I can't I, I can't say really the bank is I had to I had to read it, read it somewhere. Mm -hmm. But this would be the answer everybody in America gives me. Yeah. Because of misinformation. Yeah. See, there's strategic word fear, right? You know, you got warfare. There's word fear, and word fear is how you use words subliminally that seeps into the subconscious mind that resonates a feeling of authority, mm. right? So when we think of a bureau, who do you think of? The FBI, <laughs> to be honest. No, is TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian a government agency? They're not. They're not. Mm. Private institution, self-proclaimed mm. credit bureaus because they knew words have power. Mm. Just like the Federal Reserve Bank. That is not a bank. No, it's not, and it's yeah. not even federal. Right. Play upon words. Mm. People. Federal, bureau. Ah. FBI. FBI. It, yeah. So when we think, we think these credit bureaus exist, mm. it has a... A, a certain level of fear mm. that's a, associated with it because, yo, I'm scared of the government. Right. You know, government come and they lock people up. We don't see them again for 30, 50 years. Right. Well, if this so-called bureau is telling you that the information that they're furnishing is accurate, you're not going to challenge it mm. because you think they are a, they have more power than right. what they they're, they're the authority. There you go. Wow. So when we take away the word and use their correct name, mm. consumer, reporting agency, agency yeah. the same way they are defined in the FCRA, mm. the same way they are defined in the FDCPA, mm. we see that they are just like any other company. Mm, mm. That's the difference. Wow. It's the words. Wow. Words are so powerful. In the beginning was the word, mm. and the word was with God, and mm. the word became what? Flesh. Yes, yeah. As a man thinketh in his heart, <coughs> so is he. Yeah. Speak the things you want unto your life. So the, the, the power in words that we don't even look at their meaning subconsciously has an effect on the way we operate. Mm. 
And I learned this studying consumer <coughs> law. What I think a word means is completely different than what it means in consumer law. Wow. Totally different. Wow. And so, again, all of these credit reports. So, so I, I guess what can be reported on a credit report then? Whatever the consumer wants. You mm. control what gets reported. Mm. And so, because, so let, 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 let me get this straight, right? So let's say, for instance, um, I have a credit card that I have good credit history on. Mm -hmm. They're reporting it without my consent, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, most, most of the credit cards are not given consent. Um, how do I get it on my, or, or, I mean, it's on there already. And so the only time that this is valid is when I see something I want to take off. You get what, you get where I'm going with it? Going with it. I like, like I'm wondering because most people who uh, open an account, they don't intend to pay late or they don't intend mm -hmm. for something to mess up. And so, and so when they do open this account, they want it on their credit report. And so let's say, for instance, they do follow the steps to get it on the report. Mm -hmm. Well, what if when it's on that report, they are late? Uh, do they have the opportunity or do they have the right to say, you know what, ah, forget it. I don't want it on there no more and get it off. So you asked two questions and they're both correct. Whatever you want reported can be reported. If the account doesn't serve you, you can delete it if you want. Mm -hmm. It absolutely can. Yeah. So what I do is this, right? If it's only a late payment, I just get the late payment off. I yeah. keep the account. I keep the history. Yeah. If it's negatively affecting me, yeah. I delete what that negative thing is because you don't have to delete the whole account. You can just delete the late payment. Mm. Leave the account. You get like your like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep the years, right? Because yep. you want to maximize on the FICO points because right. we know that's what the banks are looking at. Right. Right. So we keep that to maximize on those points in those categories. Right. But at the same time, that late payment, well, I know 15 USC 1681A, mm. D2A1 mm. says that, hey, under the exclusion section, mm. The term consumer report does not include. I am going to use that to my advantage. Mm. Congress gave me that right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So when you know, it's like it's, it's playing chess. Yeah. Right? When you know where the pieces go, yeah. you have to checkmate. Yeah. yeah. So consumer law teaches you how to maneuver the pieces. Mm. Do I want this on the account? Do I want that on the account? And earlier, in the beginning, you brought something up um, about debt collectors, right? Yeah. And um, the credit card debt and all that stuff. You know, a lot of people have so many debt collectors calling them. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't know, there's people online saying that um, you, you, you have to pay debt collectors and you're supposed to send goodwill letters to delete late payments. Don't ever, like, if you are hearing the sound of my voice right now, do not ever send out a goodwill letter. Don't mm. do it. Mm. See, like, forget everything you thought you knew about credit. Everything you think you knew about credit that your auntie, your uncle, your brother, somebody told you about credit, forget all of it. Wow. The real truth to credit is consumer law. The things you are able to do with consumer law, you cannot do with anything else. Wow. For instance, 15 U.S.C. 1692CC, right? We're in the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And under the communication sections, when you go down to C, it says, in writing, a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector. Hmm. This isn't the rain making this stuff up. You can pull it up. Yeah, I want to pull that anybody up, Anybody can look it up. 15 USC, 1692 CC. Hold on, hold on, Reginald, hold on. Oh, suck pas se. He said, US, uh, US, or oh, 15 USC. Mm -hmm. 1692 CC. Oh, while you're finding it too, a friend of mine says to tell you Sac Passe. Sac Passe! Marvin Francois. He's a great friend of mine and uh, he would salute, love to meet you. Salute, salute. Yeah, yeah. He's my like, brother. tell my Haitian brother Sac Passe when you see him. <laughs> uh, 
That's what's up. Salute, salute, Marv. I appreciate you, brother. Dubagai Alfam. Oh, he didn't teach me that one. No, he, he know. He gonna know. <laughs> he didn't teach mm -hmm. me that one. 15 USC code 1692C. C, and then you go down to C. C so C. communication and connection with debt collection, mm -hmm. right? And so if we go down to C, it says seizing communication. Mm -hmm. uh, if a consumer... <clears throat> If a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing that the consumer refuses to pay a debt or that the consumer wishes the debt collector to cease further communication with the consumer, the debt collector shall not communicate further with the consumer with respect to such debt. So I, so, so I know that, but that means, that means stop calling, though. Well, that's one part. So... You hear some gurus online say, don't pay their collectors, don't pay their collectors. Mm -hmm. But when you ask them why, why not? They can't tell you where yeah. it came from. This is the law mm -hmm. that supports don't pay a debt collector. Yeah. When you put in a cease and desist, right, or a refusal to pay, a debt collector can only respond to you in one of three ways. Mm -hmm. And it's listed there. Yeah. Right? One of three ways. If it's not any of these ways, it is a violation of that law, and you can sue that debt collector mm -hmm. for violating that law. Mm -hmm. You want to see a collection delete quick? Put an intent to sue. Mm -hmm. Send them a cease and desist. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. See? Oh, my God. I'm going to give you and, and, but, but, here, but here's the thing about <laughs> debt collectors, too, though, because this is one thing that I'm sure still happens now, and I wrote this in my book. Um, a decade ago, um, I got to update the book now because now you're giving me some stuff to write about. That's pretty cool. But, but um, you know, um, there are a lot of what, what we call debt scavengers mm -hmm. who don't even have the right to collect yes. on your debt. Mm -hmm. And they're using scare tactics to scare yes. people to pay old debt that, that you know, that, that are old. Mm-hmm. So there's things called statute of limitations, exactly. that, right? Yeah. There's things called resetting the cycle mm. or starting the time over again, yeah. right? There's things called time bar debt. Yeah. There, like, there, How do you new, restart the cycle? So they could do it before, but there's a new law now mm. for debt collection, right? And um, 12 CFR 1006 um, Regulation F. You memorize all of this. I, I read this stuff every mm. day, Yeah. right? So um, th with the new laws, the new laws say a few things, right? A debt collector cannot park any alleged debt on a consumer's consumer report without first getting in contact with the consumer to whom this alleged debt is in related to. Wow. So they can't just, surprise, surprise, collections, no. Mm. That's a no-go, right? The second thing is that um, within the time... Right? So there's a 14-day period. Mm -hmm. If a debt collector sends out a notice for debt validation mm -hmm. or, or something of that nature, mm -hmm. and the consumer does not challenge the debt within that given time, have you ever heard people say your silence is acquiescence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in that, Congress gives them a 14-day period mm -hmm. where if they send out a letter and you don't respond to that letter, they can assume the debt to be valid. Mm. Assuming that it's valid doesn't mean that it's valid. Mm -hmm. means you can send out your cease and desist and do what you need to do after they mm -hmm. put it on there. But why let it get there? You can hit them with a refusal to pay, right? A volunteer non-fit injure. You can you Let me explain that. So to a willing person, mm -hmm. it is not a wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is a maxim of law. Mm -hmm. Volunteer non-fit injure. Mm -hmm. And what this simply means is if you... Know that you bought a pool of bad debt. Mm. You knowingly and willingly put yourself in harm's way mm. to buy this pool of debt. You can't cry damages when someone refused to pay you. Mm. So the law is like me being a boxer and I got hit, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to sue the person that hit me mm -hmm. because I got hit. Right. Girl, you signed up boxer, to be a boxer. It's up, a right, part right, of, right. you about to get hit. Yeah, yeah. So if these hands aren't good, bro, right. stay out the ring. Right. right. So to a willing person, it is not a wrong. Right. See, consumers don't know. Mm. And debt collectors know consumers don't know. Mm. They don't know volunteer non-fit injure. And that maxim stands true. Mm. So when you use these inside your debt collection letters, these are the fastest ways. Like if debt collectors are calling you, I send out any of my letters. Mm. I am, 
I don't like making promises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because, you know, legally we can't make any promises. Right. But from the results I've seen yeah. with all my students, with everybody that's used my letters, debt collectors. I got one student. Shout out to my guy, Edwin. Mm -hmm. Edwin, I call him the collection killer. Mm. Edwin has gotten over 500 collection account deleted. Mm. When you know, like, in the letters, they know who knows what. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that if they go to the Federal Trade Commission, which is another government website, and they look up banned, B-A-N-N-E-D, banned debt collectors, some of these fly-by-night debt collectors or debt buyers, mm. they'll pop up on the list. All you got to do is let them know you know who they are. Mm. Bro, you're on the banned list. What are you doing calling wow, me right now? A wow. lot of people don't know these resources are out there. Right, right, right. Wow. But then they get swindled into these collection, into these, these, these scammers, bro. Wow. They get swindled into these fly-by-night companies. Wow. And wow. They, they paid, and then they come to me and say, in the rain, you know, I just paid this debt collector. What? Well, you already paid them, bro. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, this is this is like, I'm gonna have to rewatch this, <laughs> right? Because you know, we, you know, I, I want to go back to some of the laws. I, I got to do my studying now um, to kind of figure figure this thing out. Um, but you also mentioned that, um, you know, earlier in the show uh, that you use the information uh, that you learned from Consumer Law mm -hmm. to also help others, like credit repair agencies. Mm -hmm. Um, so sort of like scale their business. Talk about that a little bit. So I train other credit repair business yeah. owners, right? Because, um, you know, shout out to our mentor. Um, I've developed a new skill and that I've used in my business. So over the course of a year, we literally scaled from zero to 1.5 million, nice. right? Based on the teaching and guidance of a coach. Mm. And, you know, you, you'll hear a lot of... Um, old gurus out there, I'm not going to call no names, mm. telling you that debt is bad and you're supposed to do the four, join the 40-40 club mm. where you work for 40 years, 40 hours on 40% of your income and that's not in, adjusted for inflation mm. and do all of this crazy stuff where you can get a mentor, cut that time down in half, yep. reach your financial goals because it is so easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time yeah. than it is to make a little bit of money over a long period of time. I try to tell like, them all the time. Yo, right. drop, th drop the word fast in the chat. Yo, like, I know y'all in the chat, y'all. Like, like, it makes no sense for me to wait 40 yeah. years to make a million dollars when I have coaches and friends that's doing it in a day. Yeah. I've seen where our coach did 3.5 in 27 minutes. Mm. 3.5 million dollars. Million. Yeah. In, in, in 27 minutes, like, we got the code wrong. Yeah. All right. I deployed, right, in 2020. Mm -hmm. I made about $85,000. Deployed? Uh, so you, to Kuwait. I'm okay. in the military. Okay. okay. Right? Okay. So, Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Right? And when I deployed, the whole year, I read 140 books. I wow. was averaging between 6 to 10 books a month. Right? And this is one of the pivotal moments that changed the way I think. Wow. Right? So my whole deployment, I made her like around 85000 mm -hmm. A whole year, you know, gone. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Then I came back home, paid a mentor to teach me how to do it faster. My first month after paying that mentor, I made $97,000. Wow. That's when I knew the math was In wrong. one month. One month. Wow. One month after the training, yep. I made $97,000. Wow. That's when I knew the math was wrong. Right. Right? And then every month after that, I'm averaging between one hundred to $120,000 a month. Wow. Wow. We had the math wrong mm. because we weren't doing math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, like, I have something very, very special, too, for your audience. Mm -hmm. Right? Because um, I'm going to give them something that's going to change their consumer report, mm. right? I call it um, the Vols Credit Special, mm. right? So for, everybody that, <laughs> so for everybody that watched the interview till now, I'm going to make you an offer, right? But this offer comes with a free ticket mm. to my challenge. Wow. Right? Because what you're doing is you're changing the dynamic for the culture. Yeah. And I want to get the information out there to as many people as I can. Yeah. So for everybody that takes the Vault Credit Special, they will get a free general admission ticket to my challenge, yeah. right? If it's not for platforms like this, with kings like you, we're, we're able to bring this. 
having the information from me, okay, great. I built an 800 three times. Mm -hmm. But, okay, how do you impact other people to do yeah. the same? Yeah. And this is when I figured out the math was wrong when they were telling me that, oh, you should, you should you know, ride out your career mm -hmm. doing this. And then when you're finished now, set up for retirement in your TSP and your 401k mm -hmm. and all that great stuff. Well, the other day, I'm sure I saw it on the news. You might have seen it where we are in a default with the national debt and they were talking about freezing pension plans mm. for postal workers and other um, government workers. Mm. Isn't this the same pension they told me to save towards mm. and retire from? How are you going to freeze my pension? Because, because somebody <laughs> else can't pay their bills. <laughs> right? Yeah. But... Do you do you think the country? Do you think a debt collector is gonna? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you think a debt collector is gonna buy is gonna buy that one and then call to collect on? <laughs> right, 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 right. And then call to collect on it. Like right. these are the things we gotta think about. So, if we know that we need to operate with integrity yeah. and we know that we need to use laws, this isn't laws that's hidden. You mm -hmm. don't need a passcode to access the FCRA. Yeah. You don't need some secret handshake to get into the FDCPA. Mm. This is all law that every single person can read. Mm, yeah, yeah. See, you know, one of the greatest things that a lot of us fail to do, and I was guilty of this earlier on, mm -hmm. and this is why when I got my first car, it was a Nissan Altima, right? Mm. 2007, mm. 75,000 miles, 18.9% mm. interest rate. Wow. Yes, Ooh. I didn't know anything Ooh. about credit. Yes. Ooh. I was a victim of subprime lending. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Man. Yep. He said it was a Nissan. Nissan Altima, two, first car, 2013. Man. See if I had read your book. Facts. <laughs> if I had read your book Facts. at that time, Facts. maybe that would have never Facts. happened to me. Facts. Yeah. But I didn't know anything about credit. I wanted a car so bad. Yeah. I was averaging six overtime per pay period. Wow. Because the payment for the car was like 575 and then I was a new driver, so my mm. insurance was another four hundred. I was Oof. paying almost nine hundred dollars a for month. For Nissan, Nissan <laughs> hey, yeah. yo, yeah. No disrespect to anybody <laughs> out here who's paying nine hundred dollars <laughs> for a Nissan, because I know how it could be. But I didn't know nothing about wow. credit. And what really got me upset after that, which pushed me to learning consumer law, my friend Kevin. Shout out to Kevin. Mm -hmm. I called Kevin to be a co-signer. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't comprehend what a co-signer was mm. or when a person say i am going to co-sign this for you the level of responsibility that person takes on mm. if you are hearing the sound of my voice mm. do not do not ever in your life co-sign for anyone never ever, send ever, them ever, to go ever, fix ever. their credit never ever 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 don't ever. do it yeah. my boy kevin was he's, he's like a brother to me right yeah. and I was responsible. I paid the car off and yeah. stuff. But, bro, if I had knew that Kevin literally is saying, I stand sole responsibility. If the rain decides to not pay anymore, I am the one that's on the hook for this payment. Mm. I would have never did it. Yeah. But I never knew. I knew nothing about credit. Mm. And I put my boy in such a spot. Wow. And he didn't even comprehend what he was doing, too. Wow. He was like, yo, my, my friend need a car. Mm. All right, I got some credit. You know, my boy can get a car. Mm. But how many of us ignorantly do that for our families, friends? Right. And we put them in such a situation now where, the, you know what stories get me the most? Mm -hmm. The girlfriends and the boyfriends. Mm. Artists. You know, oh my God, they need a car. I'm right. going to go to the dealership. I'm going to get you this nice whip. Partner one don't qualify. Yeah. And this is why I don't like some car dealerships. Some shady ones. Mm -hmm. To the good ones out there, shout out to y'all. Yeah. But y'all shady ones, all right, you go there with your partner. Yeah. The partner is disqualified. Mm. You know who they're looking at? You. Mm. The person beside. Why don't you co-sign mm, for it? Yeah. So now you're like, do I wreck this relationship mm. by saying no? Yeah. Or do I be the knight in shining armor now and mm. co-sign? But then five months later, yeah. that person became an ex. Mm. They're an ex out of your life, but that account is still present. Mm. And that person... But sometimes they become, they become your... your your husband or wife mm -hmm. 
but it's very like, rare. My wife, my wife is giggling because that was it's very, that was that was literally our situation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she co-signed rare. the You're, first time. You guys are one of the lucky ones. Yeah. But that doesn't 20 happen. years later, baby. Ooh, drop some fire. Look, 20 in the years chat. later, baby. And I paid it back. <laughs> With interest. Drop some fire Look, in the chat. So ladies out back. there, co-sign. <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. Co-sign for the right man. If he got potential. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> if he, if but, he hard working. But she's one of the lucky ones. If he got, <laughs> if he got his head on strong. <laughs> salute him. Queen. She's one of the lucky queen. ones. She's one of the lucky ones. Queen. See, there's a thing called um, Acres of Diamond. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've ever heard the story before. I where, have, yeah. 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 She knew what she was looking at. Yeah. See, a lot of people don't know what they're looking See, people don't know what Diamond looks like in its rough form. They only That's see true. It. She did know, though. She, she, so, she yo, saw I, 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 I walked through, and she and she and like she told me the story later. I walked through, and she was like, oh, I'm going to marry him. Mm. Yo, she she already, she already was decided. Knew. She going she so like she, she probably really acting like yeah, she for said her that boyfriend. Yeah. She did something for her. She already Facts. knew that. Oh, because she recognized what an unshaped diamond looked like. Ooh. So she knew all she needed to do was polish that. Polish baby him up. up, baby. That's what's up. Yeah, right. Okay, but a lot of us. Not, they're not able to see that. Mm. And then they co-sign. Yeah. That person became an ex. Mm -hmm. You're left with the account. Shut your credit up. Mm. They got the car with your new boo thing in there. Mm. Oh. Now, what a lot of oh. people don't know is that even co-signed accounts can also get deleted. Oh. Repos oh, my God. Wow. Yo, we need a, like a whole webinar. For wow. Yo, I'm telling you, brother. Hey, yo. Y'all yeah. need to join. So you so look, you say you got something special for my insiders, right? How can they tap into that? All right. So if they, I just got a new text number. So let me pull it up because I don't want to butcher this number. Yep. Right. So I got a new text number and I made a very, very special offer just for you, Ash. So the number is this. It's Vault, right? Because, you know, I, I love inside the Yeah, you know I mean? Right? So they text the word Vault to 9... V-A-U-L-T. Let's go. Right, text the word vault to 917 993 5238. Mm. And what this is, it's the vault credit special. Mm. Right, um, I'm giving them three ebooks, yeah, and I'm also giving them a course mm. for only $97. Mm. The thing about this offer now is this everybody that takes the offer mm. gets a free general admission mm. ticket to my channel. Dope, 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 because I want to give your platform as much value as I can. Nice. And having someone get the results, and they're going to come back here and say, Ash, the interview you did with the Credit Facts. Hero, I was able to get this deleted. Facts. And I hey, yo, yo, listen. <laughs> in the chat, y'all, I need, I need y'all to take him up on that offer. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to let me know. You know what I'm saying? Is he the credit hero? Because I'm telling you, y'all, I am really I really need those two late payments off my credit score. Receipts. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll probably be at a 900. And I was playing, ain't no 900. <laughs> but, you know, that people be like, yo, I'll be at a 900. But I need those, I need those two off. So, yeah. look, I need y'all to tap in. Tell them, tell them that, that number again and tell them where so they get. So, it's 917-993-993. Uh, Five two three eight, right? Text the word vault to nine one seven nine nine three five two three eight. They're gonna get the vault credit special. It's three of my ebooks. Yeah. Um, the twenty four hour inquiry deletion guide. This this one ebook. It's only ninety seven dollars, y'all. Only ninety seven. You spent ninety seven dollars this week already. But let me tell you what. So and then you ished it out. The course I'm giving them, the course is a $1,500 course mm. that I've given just to your audience yeah. for only 97 with three of my eBooks. Yeah. So it's my 30-day credit mastery, mm. consumer law mastery. I am giving them that on my website and in my offers alone. That one is $1,497. Mm. 1497 But for everybody that stick around to here, mm. they're getting it for only 97 along with a free general admission ticket mm. to my challenge. To your challenge. Yep. Dope. 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 I want to give value. And I want him to come back in the comments. Yes. I want Listen, him to come back in the comments and let you know yeah. on the challenge yeah. if the stuff works or not. Yeah. Yo, listen. The credit hero, Durain Del Vante is in the building, man. Yo, you gave us a lot of information, and definitely I want my insiders to rewind this, pay attention, 
Take him up on his offer so you so he could d- dive a little deeper mm-hmm. in the information that he taught you. But like like you know, when you hear new information, what I say is first of all, if you watch the show, he gave you all of the laws, mm-hmm. right? So all of the U.S. laws, you know, you can go and and verify it yourself. Yep. Don't take his word for look it. Him up. You look him up and make sure you verify it. But then take take his offer, right? Because once you take his offer, you'll be able to to start to implement the things that he's saying. And again, I know the power of credit how credit can help you build wealth, and that is what we're doing here. We want you to build wealth. We want you to, you know, you know, you know, access other people's money so you could, you know, invest in income-producing assets and get to that next level of financial freedom. Um, if people wanted to connect with you, uh, where can they find you? Definitely, definitely. So they can visit my website, DoraineDelevante.com. That's D-A-R-A-I-N-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E.com. I'm also going to send you the links and stuff. You can throw it in the description. So for those of you guys who are looking, you can just click the description below, and you'll see um, my Instagram, The Credit Hero. So that's T-H-E underscore credit underscore hero. Beware of fake profiles, guys. Please beware. Like these fake guys come out of nowhere. All the time. Like 10 per week, bro. Yeah. So just make sure that you're clicking the the Credit Hero link that Ash is going to put up. It's at T-H-E underscore credit underscore hero. There's no dot. There's no extra underscore. It's the T-H-E underscore credit underscore hero. My website, Consumer Law Secrets University, TheRainDelevante.com. The Rain De Levante, Google me. I am very Googleable. Mm, if that's let's a go. word. Let's go, y'all. We are closing out the vault. And, yo, this one was a lot of gems, so we got to close out the vault. Make sure y'all go to InsideTheVaultShow.com. Follow us on all social media platforms at Inside The Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, IamAshCash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. And join us inside the of the Abundance Community. Go to AbundanceCommunity.org. We got Doreen in there dropping more. Look, if you think he dropped some bars, we got behind the scenes. He's dropping some more bars, some exclusive content that you're not going to see here. So make sure you join us, AbundanceCommunity.org. God, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for making Inside the Vault the greatest money mindset show mm. on the planet. Right? Top 200 podcasts. Let's go. Every single week. 26 countries. We rank everywhere. Ooh. Not in the U.S., y'all. Let's go. Put some respect on our name, Jump but thank some you. fire in the chat. Thank you for making us the, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. I'm going to see you next time. Same time. Same place. In God's will. Peace.